Hi, I'm Tina Givens and I'm a designer and artist of apparel and sewing patterns and textiles and all sorts of things. Today we're going to be talking about the petticoat and bloomers, two of my favorite garments that I wear uh, in my, I have in my closet today. But they were inspired by um, petticoats and bloomers from a long, long time ago. And the petticoat came about in late 19, uh, sorry, 1500s. And later on in the 1700s, Jane Austen would wear a simple linen slip under her empire waist dresses. And they were all hand sewn and they were in linen or cotton. They were hand sewn because the machines were not really available. Um, today I'm going to share how to do the ruffling on a petticoat inspired piece. And I love to use linen because it gives it a texture and it has that sort of raw edge which I love so much. And I'm going to show you how to finish those. This is actually a linen gauze which you can actually insert lace pieces into it or anything you want. You can even put some pieces of ribbon in, it would be really gorgeous. And this is just three, three simple layers. You can do a simple, uh, one layer, as many as four layers, which we have underneath here. So there's two techniques that I like to use. And this one here, this is our petticoat. And uh, I love to make this out of linen because linen is so uh, textured and once you launder it, even with its ruffled and raw edges, it creates all that texture. It's all about the ruffling and ruffling can be quite intimidating when you look at it. It looks intimidating right now, but it's actually very, very simple and I'm going to show you two methods on how to do it. The first I'm going to do is hand ruffling, which is really easy and people always ask me, like, how do you hand ruffle? Well, it's sort of a secret in that it's so simple. The first thing we want to do is, because we're using linen, it's going to fray on the edges. We want to either finish the edges, but my favorite part is simply using a zigzag stitch. And you're going to do this about a quarter to, um, to, a, quarter to a half inch from the edge. Make sure that I'm on zigzag. And then we're going to carry on and zigzag all the way around all four sides of your strips. And I cut the strips about four to six inches in width and the length of the fabric. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to take the time to do all the strips now, but you can see that we have this really fun zigzag stitch. So when you launder it, this is going to fray a little bit and give us that sort of raw wrinkly edge. So all four sides are done, and now we're going to hand ruffle. And you're going to hand ruffle about an inch from your top edge. You're going to put, you're going to change to a straight stitch, and then simply push your fabric through. About, see where I'm pushing my fabric through, it's about half inch, and then I'm going to keep going. And you can, you, you might want to practice on a few strips before you do this, but it's as simple as that. It's also fun and really therapeutic, I have to say. I can just sit here all day and do this. For one length or one width around your, your petticoat um, slip, you're going to need about double the width of your dress. So you're going to ruffle this to about you need, your ruffle strips need to be about double the width of your dress. So if your dress is two feet wide, you're going to need four feet of strips. And that's what you're going to get. So if we, I'm not going I didn't do all the strips here, but I've got some finished here to share with you. So we now have our strips of ruffles. And at the bottom of your dress, again, you're going to zigzag this or finish the, I like to use a little bit of a rolled hem, but that's fine. And then you're going to pin your strips into position, oops, sorry, onto the base of your dress, around the edge of the dress. Now notice I'm not pinning it all the way to the end because I want this ruffle to stand out from the edge of the dress. And you're going to keep going. Then we're going to stitch it in place. I'm going to go this way. Again, a straight stitch. You're stitching on top on the right side of the dress. Straight stitch. 
and we're going to stitch right on top of the stitches of where the ruffle was. And don't take yourself so seriously because this is just a very easy process. Just ease your fabric through as you, as you stitch that ruffle in place. You're going to go past your side seams and all the way around your skirt. And now we're going to pin the second one in place. So there we have our first ruffle in place, and you can just leave it that way. Or we add our second ruffle. If I can find it, here it is. So then we just pin past the first ruffle. It's about two or three inches above, depending on the width of your ruffles. You don't have to do this width. You can do much shorter ruffles. It's all up to you and how roughly you want your petticoat. And you're going to repeat the process all the way around your dress. Stitch on top of the stitches all the way through. I'm not going to finish this, obviously, but I'm just showing you. There's your technique. Do we have our two ruffles? And you can go three and four. The second technique I'm going to share with you is actually using a ruffle foot. And that's really fun. And I use this technique on bloomers because it gives the pant a little bit of weight. So here's your bloomer and there's your bottom edge. So you can see how I've actually folded this fabric and we've finished it with a binding. And we've done some pleats up the front of the leg. So you're going to start with two strips. You're going to start with your binding strip, which is about two and a half inches wide. This is going to go all the way around your pant leg. And then double the width of your pant leg, you're going to have your wider ruffling strip. And this is about five inches. We're going to press each one in half lengthwise. So we have this. We have our binding and our ruffle in half. And the first thing we're going to do is ruffle. So this is a ruffle foot. And you can find a ruffle foot for most machines from a very simple machine to a very fancy machine. And these here on all ruffle foots, they have these gauges. So I am using the about sort of in the middle of here, you to have one ruffle per inch, six ruffles or 12 ruffles. It's really like pleats. So just like we were doing with our hand, now we're going to use this ruffle foot. You see how that ruffle foot actually slides the fabric. So it's doing the work of your fingers. And you're going to get a very nice even pleat. And you can play with the lengths till, till you get a length that you really love. You can either do it really tight or you can do it much looser. So now we have our ruffle. And our ruffle is nice and even. And no raw edge this time. So now we're going to put our ruffle and our binding on our pant bottom edge. And you're going to measure and make sure that your ruffle just goes all the way around. We're going to put it on the inside of the pant leg, on the inside of the fabric, and you're going to stitch it in place. And you're just going to straight stitch it in place, and then when you turn it, you're going to, your, your binding is going to go onto the right side, and you're going to cover that seam allowance, just like here. And then I just zigzagged the binding in place. So now you have two ways to ruffle and make your own bloomers and petticoats.